Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where I'm going to show you how to quilt and quilt your quilt in a small space. Many of us don't have a lot of space to quilt in, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy quilting and quilting. With a few modifications, you can quilt even in the tiniest of space. So let's get started. Just create with fabric and floss. So my granny granny had a huge room that she had a big stretcher that she could put a king size quilt on width wise and then be able to roll it up as she's quilting around. And she is set in the middle of the room and she had a chair that she moved around the table with as she quilted each of the different spots. Then she moved and she got one that went up on the wall. So then she can just pull it down, do her quilting when people weren't there, and then put it back up on the wall. And I just love sitting there watching her hand quilt. She did some intricate design. But today I'm just going to show you just the basic. And then you can go out there and run with it on your quilts. And so the first thing we need to do is obviously we need to make our quilt. So this is the quilt we made. I will link video to how I made this quilt in the description below if you want to check it out. So you need to make your quilt and you need to sandwich it. So I have it already sandwiched together. I spray basted mine, but you can pen them if you would like. You're also going to need some quilty thread. You're going to need a thimble. You're going to need a pen to write on or a chalk pencil or water soluble pen. Just something that erases to be able to draw your line in design on your quilt top. And of course you're going to need some scissors. You can need some stretcher bars. These ones my husband made me. I'll flip it around here in a minute and show you. Or an embroidery hoop. And then you're going to need quilting needles. Or needle, I shouldn't say needle. You need a quilting needle. So then the next step is, you know, obviously to prepare your layers and make your quilt sandwich. And then when you're ready, you got to set up your space. You got to be organized. It is important to be organized because you have such a small space to be working in. You can use a small table or a lap desk to work on. Make sure you have enough lighting. That is key, especially if you're using thread that blends in with your fabric. And you got to make sure you're comfortable. That's why I'm sitting on the couch today. And then you got to keep your supplies handy. They got to be close by. So I have a TV tray sitting next to me that has all my supplies on it. So then what you need to do is we're going to prepare our stuff and get ready to quilt. So we're going to take some thread. You don't need a very long but long enough that it's comfortable for you to work with. I'm going to be using black today in the video so you can be able to see it on the quilt. But when I am actually quilting this, I am using invisible thread. And the reason I'm using the invisible thread is because 
because there's so many colors and textures going on in my quilt. I don't want my quilting taking away from that. So I'm using the invisible thread instead. So you have your thread. And you're going to thread your needle. Then you're going to take and hold your thread and your needle. Then you're going to wrap your thread around your needle two times and then pull it up. This is called a quilter's knot. Well, that didn't work very well. <laughs> okay. Hold the end and your needle, twist it around twice, pull it through. Helps to hold the right end of the thread. And pull it, and then just put it toward the end. Have you said that's called a quilter's thread and quilter's knot? <laughs> and then you have to put your quilt on either the hoop, which I will show that later, or stretchers. So this is just some one by threes furring strips that my husband just cut and made into a rectangle and then we just pull our quilt as tight as I can you want it pretty taunt but don't stretch too much and then I'm just clipping it down and I just worked my way around now this is similar to the way my grandma used to quilt but um ours was on a big stretcher so then you want your simple and your simple is mainly to help when you're pushing your needle through I start from the back and I'm going to stitch this pink one here. Now, yes, I kind of have this funky. You will put position it so it's easier for you. So I like to start on the back and poke it up and I pull it through. And then I pull that knot through the fur or the back, your backing fabric so it's in between. The layers. And then you're going to have one hand underneath, one hand on top with your needle, and you're just going Pretty much like a basting stitch. And weave your needle through all the layers. Just like you would do a running stitch or a basting stitch. Push it through, and then you're just going to pull it. And you want your stitches kind of close together there. You can make smaller stitches. You can do one stitch at a time. If, you know, you feel easier, you can do the poke and stab. It will take a little longer, but you poke it down. Bring it back up. 
my grandma had to do that several times depending on her design. So then if you're doing, you know, like a meander or you want to do an intricate design that you don't want know how to do on your um, domestic machine, you're, you know, you're not comfortable doing free motion, you can be able to trace it on here and continue to quilt around. So I'm going to show now with the hoop. And I'll get from a different angle so you can see better what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hoop. It on my hoop. I do have my thread on the top so I can make sure not to tangle it. So what you do is you put your bottom hoop down. And then you're going to push this top hoop on top. And it's a lot easier if you're doing it on a flat surface. And so you want to work section at a time. So like I could, in the hoop, I can be able to have these two squares to work for. So once you have it on your hoop, you want to twist and tighten it up a little bit. Pull your quilt so it's nice and tight, and then just keep twisting so the hoop is tight together. Now, I like to use the hoop when I'm quilting and quilting because I'm able to do it at night while I'm watching TV. <clears throat> Plus, it gives me more control over. The section I'm working on. So you want to work in sections at a time. And then you're just going to follow the design that you traced or printed on. So here we are with. We're going to just stitch around in here. So just bring your needle down and up. And you have your hand underneath so you can guide your needle. And then you have your thimble. And that's to help push through your needle too. And you pull it. And you just follow your design that you have. I'm just doing the straight, traditional, and quilting that my granny used to do. And you do that all the way around your piece. Now, like I said, I'm using black here. Just so you can see it on camera, I'm actually using a invisible, which I've stitched right here, and you can't see the thread. You can just kind of see where stitches are. Shape, design, that you wish for, that you trace on. And you're just doing little stitches all the way around. So I hope you got something out of this video on how to hand quilt in a small space. But let's kind of recap. You need to have your quilt ready to go, obviously. We're quilters, right? And if you're like me, 
we probably have a good stash over there that need to be wilted. You need to get your supplies ready. Your supplies is a needle, some quilting needle, quilting thread, either a hoop or some stretcher bars, a thimble, a marking utensil to trace your pattern and design on your quilt top, and of course some thread. You want to have all your supplies handy so you can easily keep getting more thread when you need. You need to work in small spaces. Don't try to do the whole quilt at once. Just work in section by section. Make sure you use a need a thimble. A thimble is important to protect your fingers. A thimble helps push the needle through the fabric and it gives you more control over your stitching. I don't like to use a thimble very much. When I am stitching, I just use my, just do it, and then I'll put the thimble on if I need to, to help push it through. I just, it's uncomfortable. So find what's easier for you, but the thimble does protect your fingertips. You want to make sure that your lines are straight and even and follow the lines that you marked if you're making curves and different designs. And that is it. That's how I hope you just learned how to hand quilt in a small space. Remember, quilting takes patience and time. So take your time and enjoy the process. Don't be afraid to experiment with different quilting designs and techniques. Pick what goes with your fabric, your quilt. I want to thank you for watching if you made it this far. If you got something out of it, give it a thumbs up. Maybe, um, share with some of your friends and if you want to see some more hand quilting and using some different designs comment below and let me know but be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss when I upload another video if you'd like to support the channel you can always check out my Amazon store or the buy me a coffee in the description below. You can also hit the join button to give you lots of perks that um, you normally don't for supporting the channel. Coming on screen now is a video that YouTube feels that you will like. If you want to see more quilting techniques designing quilts there's a playlist right below that until then happy quilting my friends